I recently finished up a pretty aggressive dieting period that saw me bring my calories down from about 2,500 to 3,000 ish calories a day, all the way down to about 1,000 to 1,200 calories a day. Now, it's very aggressive and I only did it for about four weeks. Today, I wanna to go through some of the results that I've experienced from this visually, but also have a look at some of my blood work and see where my hormone levels are sitting at, and also answer a few of the common questions I was getting when I was putting this up throughout my social medias. So, to begin with, let's dive straight in and have a look at the photos here. So, photo on the left here was taken November 19, um, this is 2021, and on the right, the photo was taken on the 17th of December. Um, so that was about four weeks. I kept dieting for another week or so after that, all the way up until um, Christmas Day. And then from Christmas Day up until now, being January, January 4, I have been sitting back at maintenance calories, which has been around about 24-ish hundred calories per day. Um, there's been a little bit of variation, obviously. It's not been perfect because there's been things like New Year's and Christmas where I've been eating a little bit more freely as well. But I would say on average, those numbers are pretty accurate. So as you can see on the left, um, not overly um, overweight or carrying a lot of excess body fat. There is some extra fluff there. You can see on the right here, um, there is a noticeable change in body fat. You can see a big drop in um, in body fat through my waist, uh, up around through my chest region as well, a lot through my face, through my neck, through my um, through my traps and shoulders, and um, as well just overall through my arms. Well, you can see the vascularity popping through a lot there. Um, I did hide my legs. <laughs> I didn't even realize when I was taking the photo at the time. I will take some follow-up photos and um, and put them up so you guys can see that my legs haven't shrunk away. <laughs> um, now. In terms of body weight, I dropped about six kilograms total here. So on the left, I was weighing about 75-ish kilos, and on the right here, I was weighing about 69.5 kilograms, I think, from memory. I think the absolute lowest my body weight got to was 69.2. I'd have to look through my um, through my files again to see where it went to. Um, and now, so this is again um, uh, about two two-ish weeks or so. Um, after finishing roughly this diet, or this photo at least anyway, my body weight is still sitting at about that 69.5-ish uh, range, uh, which is quite interesting because my calories, of course, they have been increased. Um, I'll talk about that more in probably another video because I want to give it probably a few more weeks of eating the way I am now with a higher intake before I do a follow-up video of the post dieting period. I think a lot of people um, get kind of blown away looking at a video like this saying, oh my God, he's lost so much body fat. I want to do this now. But even though I'm doing this right now showing you guys, I want to put in a disclaimer. You should be looking at transformation photos and taking it with a grain of salt and saying, yeah, you look good now, but I want to see how you look after the after photo. Show me what happens four weeks after. Show me what happens four months after. Show me what happens a year after that show me something that is actually sustainable in terms of the results you've gotten. Because anybody can take a bunch of drugs and starve themselves and see an incredible transformation. But it takes a very different approach and a different set of skills, to be honest, to be able to see a similar result or a better result, or maybe even not as dramatic a result, but to keep it long-term and to see it carrying you further and further on into the rest of your life. Because I don't know about you guys, but for me personally, I don't want to be going through periods of just yo-yo dieting for the rest of my life where I see incredible results and then bounce back and compromise my health and then have to diet again or put on a lot of body fat again or whatever it may be. Like, I'm not against putting on body fat. I think it's completely normal and it's obviously healthy in some degrees to be putting on a degree of body fat as well, um, especially when we're looking at things like getting complete stage lean. However, I think that this should be, look, be, be looked at from a long-term health perspective and a sustainability perspective um, more than anything else. So, again, yeah, six kilograms. Um, by the looks of these things, like I don't have a DEXA scan here, but it looks like most of it was fluid and, um, and body fat. I don't see much change in my muscle mass. Um, in terms of my training performances, I didn't see any dips whatsoever, so I'm going to assume that most of it if not all, was fluid 
glycogen and, um, and body fat loss. And this is part of what I predicted as well. So when it comes to determining how much fat or how much weight I was going to be losing, I looked at what kind of deficit did I create and for me, that was looking at a very, very, very steep deficit. And then I would work out from that deficit, how much weight can I predict to lose based on that? Using the assumption that one kilogram of body fat is 7,700 calories. Now, that's a very, very loose number to be playing with. And it helps give you like a good rough estimation on what you should be shooting for in terms of weight loss if you're tracking progress. But keep in mind when I say things like that, it's not perfect. There were weeks, especially in the first few couple of weeks here, where I dropped a lot more weight. I was dropping, I dropped maybe two kilograms in the first maybe five days or so. It's not all body fat. Um, but on average, over the four week period here, it came down to six kilos or 1.5 kilograms per week on average, which roughly equated to the deficit that I created for myself. All right. Um, enough waffle on that. Let's have a look at some of the questions here and talk about um, some of the things that were brought up. And also we'll have a look at my, um, my, my blood work as well because I do have a couple of questions that came up around that. Um, first question here from VK is, did I ever feel the need to incorporate cheat meals, whether for metabolic reasons or even for psychological reasons, keep me focused and on track? Or even a day here and there where you increase your calories back to maintenance before coming back down again. Really glad you did this. Short aggressive cuts are psychologically easier to follow. You'd be surprised how often people think they're in a deficit but aren't because they're trying to cover every gram of every calorie. You just can't be that accurate. Yeah, I agree. So um, in this video, I'm not talking whatsoever about um, how or why I'm doing, I did this aggressive diet, how I set it up and some of the reasons behind it. I've already done a couple of big videos on that. So I've done a video where I talk all about setting it up and why I'm doing it and why I prefer these kinds of dieting periods. And I'll leave a link to that up here. And I've also done a video all about uh, going through a day of me eating as well, which was taken on Christmas Eve, um, which gives you a bit of insight into what I was eating, which honestly just really was not that much. Um, I'll also leave a link to that up in the corner and both will be down in the description box below. Um, so yes, coming back to cheat meals for metabolic health um, or for psychological reasons. So first of all, one thing to keep in mind is that cheat meals don't really offer that much of a metabolic benefit in terms of preventing any slowdown to your metabolism or any of the adaptations that may occur. Um, that hasn't really been shown to have much of an effect just from having one meal or even one day hasn't been shown to do that much. We need to take more of an extended diet break for I think maybe, maybe two weeks, I'm not really sure. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but a more extended period of time as opposed to just one week, uh, sorry, one day or one meal. Um, so you will feel maybe a little bit more energized from having that extra meal, a bit, bit of a better training before, a bit of a better pump. Um, but is that really gonna translate to a high metabolic output long-term? Probably not. So the big reason that you would have cheat meals or untracked free meals, you don't really know what you're having, um, would be for psychological benefits. And yeah, there were a couple of days where I was doing that. So on those days, I know one of them I was traveling because I was doing some photo shoots for the, for the new release of clothing that's coming out. Um, oh, three days. Um, very exciting. Little side note, a little bit of a cheeky plug as well. But um, I did wind up eating breakfast at a cafe on the road. And I felt like I wanted it as well. It wasn't just because of the convenience factor. It was also like, I feel like I want to have uh, something out and just enjoy a meal out. Now, I was still mindful of telling myself, try to keep it to that 1,000 to 1,200 calorie mark for the entire meal, which honestly is pretty easy to do. Even when you're eating out, it's like there are a lot of fast food options. We can easily blow up over 1,000 calories in a meal. But if you're eating out in a cafe, having things like toast, having things just like a little bit of chicken with a salad, just because you didn't prepare it yourself, I get dressing on the side as well, but um, it's very easy to stick within those limits. So on a day like that, where I felt like I needed a psychological break more than anything else, I would eat out and I'll just have honestly that one meal in the entire day. Um, it's not ideal because there's no way that I'd be hitting enough protein for the entire day. Um, and I'd probably suffer if I was training on that day. So I wouldn't recommend doing that much, but that meal out wasn't for a physiological benefit. It wasn't for a metabolic benefit. It was purely for my psychological benefits to be able to relax a little bit, enjoy a meal out and feel like a, a regular human being, um, at least for that meal, because the rest of the day I wasn't eating. And then I wouldn't eat for the rest of the day because I didn't really know I was in that meal. 
It might have been 500 calories, which is, you know, more than fine. It might have been 1,000 calories, which is still kind of fine as well. But just in case it was, it happened to be on that super, super high side of like 1,000, 200 calories for that meal, um, I made sure that I didn't eat for the rest of the day. I, again, would not recommend doing that much regularly if you're doing dieting in general because it does honestly stack the psychological cards against you because then you've got to go the rest of the day not eating. Um, depends on your personal preference though. For me, I don't mind doing that whatsoever. It's not a big deal. It's very easy for me, especially when I'm traveling and busy, to just keep myself busy and not thinking that much about food and that way I could slot in that little bit of a extra free meal. Um, so in terms of maintenance calories, yeah, there were a couple of days where I did notice my weight dropped too much. So after the initial weight drop, which is very, very normal and very expected when you're doing any kind of calorie drop into a deficit, um, that's going to be glycogen and fluid. So if um, for every gram of carbohydrate that's stored on your body as glycogen, every gram of that that decreases, um, there's going to be roughly a loss of an extra three to four grams coming from fluid. So if I lost, say, I don't know, let's say random numbers out here, a kilo of muscle glycogen, I might drop three-ish kilos extra from fluid losses as well. There's going to be big fluctuations to that, but that just gives you a bit of a rough ballpark to know why you see such big weight drops in the um, first part of a dieting period and why it tends to stall out after that as well because people just do that first little drop and then they think, oh, I'm, I'm on the deficit now, but it's really just a little bit of glycogen and performance decreases more than anything else and then it starts spinning their wheels for the rest of the dieting period not getting any results. Not good, right? So I, um, after seeing that, that was fine, I just kept going. I think it might have been towards the end of week two from memory where um, I saw another big drop. So I already seen the big drop at the very start for the first few days and then things leveled off. And then it was probably like five or six days holding the same body weight or maybe slight small increases. And then there was another big drop of like two kilos overnight. Now that told me that, oh, hang on, I feel really good right now but I might be around the corner from feeling really, really horrible because maybe my body, my body was dropping a little bit too aggressively. Maybe I'm gonna start risking uh, muscle loss, which is a very real thing. Maybe I'm going to be risking um, just big energy and mood losses as well. So I would bring myself back up to maintenance, calories straight away for a couple of days. So there were, uh, I think it was three or four days in total across the entire four week period um, where I did bring my calories back up to maintenance. They weren't all in a row. It was interspersed when I noticed dips like that. I do think it was two days at maintenance I did for the first one when I noticed a big drop and then there were two more instances where I did one day back at maintenance per time. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, that's really, really important. So that's, that's why like when it comes to dieting, you wanna look at not just um, sticking to things and getting whatever the calculator spat out for you to follow, but knowing how to be dynamic. Okay, the most important way to make any diet sustainable, whether it's a fat loss diet for weight loss purposes, or it's a maintenance kind of thing, or it's a muscle building diet, we're eating a lot more calories, you need to learn how to be dynamic to the results and how to be able to change things how to be able to know when you should be increasing calories or decreasing things preemptively. You want to be able to know how to be able to fit a cheat meal in like I have um, without it blowing out your results as well. And then also being mature enough to be able to decide for yourself, am I the kind of person who can psychologically get through one meal a day to be able to afford myself in this context a meal out? Um, there are some really, really important questions that I don't think people consider when it comes to dieting. They just sort of just dive head first into saying, oh, I wanna lose a lot of weight now. It's New Year's, it's time to transform my body. I'm just gonna stick with it through sheer determination and power of will for the next 12 weeks. And that's why people fail. That's why this stuff is not sustainable. Okay, whether you're doing a super hard diet with 2,000 calories gone, or you're fasting on zero calories, or you're doing a very mild 100 calorie drop and barely seeing any results, the reason why it's unsustainable is because you're not having these kinds of conversations with yourself. You know, understanding how to be dynamic, how to be reactive to changes, and how to be um, proactive before seeing things um, going downhill. And just being mature enough with yourself to be able to decide that you're an adult, most of you, I'm guessing, are adults, and that you're gonna be able to, able to make adult decisions around dieting and fat loss, muscle building, whatever it is your goals may be. All right, um, it's a long rant on that one. Let's move on, shall we? Let's move on. Um, average weight loss per week, yeah, so yeah, already answered that one in this last little bit. 
Um, how much did you lose? Yep, talked about that already. Yeah, um, how's it impacted my strength? Not at all, not at all. I've spoken about um, training and how I set up my training to make sure I don't see big drops in strength or anything like that in the last video I did, which was the diet breakdown. So I'm not gonna talk about it in this video, we're gonna get into other stuff. But again, link to that up in the corner um, for you guys and in the description to go, to go check that out. Um, looks really dark. Really dark. Oh, I don't want to get up and have to do another like jump cut in the editing process. I'm just gonna pray that the sun comes back out and we get some better lighting. I might do some post-production light turning up in a sec. You'll see. You'll see. You still have kept this in as well. And you're like, ah, oh, this is this is weird. Um, oh, cool. Good question. So, how long will the maintenance phase be after the aggressive dieting phase? Would you recommend? I'm not gonna have a go at you because um, I'm pretty sure like English might not be your first language. And if it is your first language, I've probably just been incredibly racist against Yu Jia Cheng Chu. Um, but hey, can I really be that racist if it's if I'm an Asian as well? Um, hello coach, how long the maintenance phase will be after aggressive diet phase would you recommend? You guys know what they're asking here. Um, so I don't need to bust your balls there. I think um, I, I put in here that's roughly half as long as the dieting phase as a very bare minimum. So if you have been dieting, so I've been dieting for four weeks, I would do the maintenance phase for at least two weeks, but ideally longer. Look, I'm in no rush to start dieting again. Um, you want to be, the thing you want to be looking out for is you need to be back at maintenance for as long as it takes you to restore your health, if health was compromised in any way, but also to restore your psychological health, if that was compromised in any way, and also just your lifestyle, your habits, your relationships, whatever it may be. Okay, it's not just about looking at the metabolism side of things, it's also looking at the psychological and the holistic side of things, as much as I dislike that word. Um, but as a general rule, I'd say half as long as your dieting period. If you dieted for six months, do three months at, um, at maintenance, at minimum, before looking at dieting again. Because um, I do definitely believe in doing little spits of dieting, little sprints of dieting, or slow sprints of dieting, slow marathons of dieting, and then pulling back for a period of time of maintenance, and then going again. Completely valid. Especially if you have a lot of body fat to lose, it can be really just demanding neurologically, like mentally, to just be dieting forever. Um, so, put in little breaks like that for yourself. Put in little breaks. Uh, protein intake, spoke about that in, um, in the other videos, about 150 grams. Um, <laughs> give us the raw details. How, how were your, your stools? Completely normal, completely fine. I usually have two bowel movements per day, in the morning, in the night. Usually I have maybe one throughout the day, maybe. Um, Typical consistency, um, all that kind of stuff. Nothing changed there. Sleep, I did sleep a little bit more. Okay, I did find myself sleeping more than normal, uh, maybe an extra hour or so. Energy through the day wasn't really effective whatsoever. I didn't check um, any girth measurements, um, just because I'm lazy. I didn't get a DEXA scan either, just pure lazy. Um, I didn't live off coffee, not at all. I had coffee a couple of times a week. Definitely, I did do that. Um, that's the plain chicken breast excites you so much because of being hungry. Yeah, look, I, I just, I do enjoy just food in general, so it didn't excite me more. Um, was there a feeling of euphoria when you wake and felt so chiseled that you gave, that, that you, which gave you motivation to continue? Um, yeah, no, I, I, I don't, I did not feel that. Um, like, I like seeing progress, I'm, I'm sure we all share that. Um, I didn't feel euphoric over it. I was like, cool, I'm making progress. I'm doing the right thing for what I want to do right now. So I'm just going to keep going. The death face of hard dying. Yeah, you can definitely see. Let's come back up. Um, I mean, a bit of this lighting as well. You can see there's a little bit more of a, an aggressive down light here. I think must, the sun must have been a um, different time of day. Um, so the, I have some more shadows on my, on my face as in, <laughs> in general. But you can definitely see... Um, it just looked a bit more tired in general um, from before to after. But I think when you zoom in, it's actually not that bad. And if you look at me here, do I really look that I'm that wrecked and tired? I don't know. Maybe I do. Maybe you can tell me, Eugene, you look old as fuck. What happened to you? I don't know. Uh, um, okay. Where do we go? <laughs> Where do we go? Um, 
yeah, muscle. I've spoken a lot of muscle. I've been talk about that um, in here. Um, okay, yeah, here we go. Um, vitamin T assisted therapeutic dosages. I'd be interested in the hormone panel if you're not supplementing. So let's yeah, let's go have a look at that. Um, and talking about the the flat feet. Yeah, it's not injuries. I've always had flat feet. Um, I'm just holding. If you look at my knees here on this after photo compared to over here, my knees are pointing. Let me zoom out a bit. Knees are pointing in different directions because I was flexing my quads here. My legs were hidden here, so I wasn't really flexing anything, and I wasn't arching my feet there. And I wasn't arching. I just sort of relaxed here with my legs. So that's why you see the flat feet. I've always had flat feet. Um, it's not really a problematic thing for me or for many other people because um, I, I can do what I need to do in the gym to be able to train effectively and move effectively without not any pain. So no big deal. Um, all right, yeah, so let's get to the blood work show because I know that's what people care about. So where was the question again? Um, oh yeah, vitamin T assisted therapeutic doses. So it's asking testosterone replacement therapy, steroid use, any other kind of stuff. Was I doing that? No, I was not. Um, so here is my um, hormonal panel, uh, which was done, yeah, 22nd of December. So testosterone is, I was actually surprised to see this that my testosterone is sitting roughly in the normal range. I normally sit around like this midpoint to the low end of normal. That's pretty normal for me, like this free testosterone. Um, that's typically where I would sit. Um, there have been times where I've sat even lower than that. Um, I just generally just have slightly lower testosterone. I would not have been surprised if I saw it decreasing, honestly. I would not be surprised if it, if it came back um, below this 333. Um, I wouldn't have been surprised because yeah, it's something's gonna happen when you diet. When you're going through a dieting period, it's a short one or a long one, you're applying stress to your body. One of the ways your body tries to conserve resources and energy is through decreasing sex hormone production. There's also just less available fuel for your body to go towards manufacturing um, things like your hormones and testosterone. Like my fat intake was maybe 40 grams a day or so, which is sufficient enough maybe, but even then, like it's probably not enough long term. Chances are, if I continue with this diet for another four weeks um, and didn't take this break at all, I probably would see decreases. Um, unfortunately, I didn't take um, pre-test blood pre-test pre-diet blood work, so there's no comparison here um, to be able to go back to see where it was at four weeks ago. Because chances are, maybe it was even higher. Maybe it was towards a high end. Um, but yeah, it's it's um, relatively low. But I'm not concerned because that's honestly typically where I I sit in general. Um, uh, what else is there? Okay, so this FSH. This um, FSH, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, these are two um, brain hormones that send the signals out to the, um, to the brain of the rest of the body to tell your body to produce testosterone or other hormones. So when you see testosterone itself being a little bit lower, it's not unusual to see these things a little bit on the higher end because it's your brain saying, hey, we should try producing more hormones in general um, because we, we notice a lack of that. It's part of this whole negative feedback loop or feedback loops within the body where your body, your brain is constantly sensing levels of hormones in the body and saying, okay, if it's not enough, we need to produce more. If it's too much, we're gonna produce less. And that's why when you see people using steroids, um, like using testosterone replacement therapy, FSH and LH, they tend to be um, down completely, like zero, because, um, well maybe not zero, but just super, super, super low, because the brain detects more than enough testosterone circulating in the bloodstream, and it says, okay, I don't need to produce anymore, so it turns off or it down-regulates the production of these two hormones, which are the main switches for the um, your body to be producing testosterone and to be producing sperm. Um, all right. What else is happening in my um, blood work? I don't really focus much on cortisol being the one test. Like also these tests up here, like when it comes to looking at your hormones, uh, looking at things for blood like this are important. If you were trying to assess something a little bit more deeper, it's probably better to have um, something like a Dutch panel done, which is a dried urinary test uh, where you pee on a stick um, a few times a day um, to give you more of a indications to how your hormones are fluctuating and what the trend is over a longer period of time. Um, but for just, uh, I guess, 
entertainment, <laughs> educational purposes, curiosity purposes, uh, where I don't really have anything I'm really worried about here, um, blood work is fine. But I will get a follow-up test in a couple of weeks time because I am curious to see, now that I'm back at maintenance, where things go in maybe two, three, or maybe I'll probably give another month and then I'll see where things, where things get to after that. All right. Um, thyroid output, um, I remember seeing a question in the YouTube section around thyroid hormones. Um, so yeah, my thyroid hormones are all in good spots, which is nice, nice to see. It's not unusual to see things like your free testosterone, uh, your, three, your free T3 going down um, as you diet more, as your metabolism shuts down or you see adaptation occurring. Um, so again, like I haven't seen, I haven't seen any adaptation occurring whatsoever throughout this dieting period. So some people are saying, oh my God, usually you're gonna shut down your metabolism, you're gonna blow it, you're gonna put on all the excess body fat after, you're gonna ruin your hormones, ruin your sex drive, your hair's gonna fall out, so everything that you could imagine that's gonna to happen to you is gonna happen because you're dieting so aggressively, and it's not going to happen. It happens to some people, but it's not because of the deficit itself, it's because of what else they're doing outside of the deficit, or what they're not doing outside of the deficit. So I made sure that I was um, in a good place in terms of mental health for one thing, in terms of my relationship with food, in terms of my nutrient status, in terms of uh, my training and how I handle stress, all that kind of stuff, and my sleep, which is most important, make sure I was getting enough sleep well before I started thinking about a dieting phase like this. Um, really, really important stuff. Um, blood glucose, um, insulin, as you would expect, they are quite low because I was just in a fasted state, but also not eating um, many calories at all. Um, cholesterol, my LDL has always been on the highest side. This is actually one of the better results for it. But again, LDL um, so it doesn't really tell you much about the particle size, whether it is the, um, the, the worst particle size or the better, healthier particle size. I always forget which one is which. Okay, LDL cholesterol can be big fluffy particles or small dense particles. I think it might be the small dense particles that are the bad ones. I don't know, I can't remember. Somebody smarter than me can pop it into the comment section. Um, cool, iron, yeah. You can see that, you can screenshot. If you wanna talk about that, I don't know. Minerals. Um, I'm, I'm just happy to see most things are within this normal range. I would not have been surprised if things were below the normal range from dieting and being in a depleted nutrient status for so long. Um, it, wouldn't have, it wouldn't have surprised me. That's part of why I stopped dieting, just to help to, help to prevent that. Um, so we see here some, uh, some change. Some, this is my uh, inflammation or immune markers. And this is probably typical. Um, I don't know for sure. I don't know for sure, so I'm gonna do, again, I'm gonna do a follow-up test anyway, um, but seeing an increase in this ESR, they say it's an inflammation thing, um, which probably is related to training, and because I trained the day before, so just some training-related inflammation. It could also just be inflammation just from dieting in general. I'm not too sure. Um, I know that I wasn't sick when I had these tests done, to my knowledge anyway, um, but it's something where hopefully that does come down when I do look at my retests. Um, the thing with blood work is I never, tr I never, I try to avoid being too stressed out by seeing things like this. It's just a one-off test. It's more about what happens afterwards, especially if you can explain it through things like maybe training. So the next time I do blood work, I will make sure I don't train for about, I think a week before is, is, is advised. I will double check what the minimum time is and try to go a little bit longer than that as well. Creatine kinase, very normal to see that with muscle damage, so just training in general, and taking creatine. So not too worried about that. Um, and yeah, I think that is about it. These are just basic hematologies um, for the most part, which is all normal white cells were a little bit lower. Um, so again, I'm just reading off this right now because I'm not, I'm not an expert on this kind of stuff. Um, lower white counts, vitamin deficiencies, okay? Would not be surprised if that's the case. Um, even though it showed in the blood work that it wasn't a deficiency thing, very well could be, very well could be. So I'm not, I'm not surprised by seeing something like that. Um, same as this, uh, neutrophils, maybe I, I did have some kind of, um, maybe I was sick, maybe it's part of this inflammation in general, um, maybe it is a dying process, who knows. Um, I am going to get a follow-up test and just see what happens with that. Um, hopefully it comes back up, we'll see.
Uh, liver function, cool, everything's normal there. And I think, man, this, this, is, this keeps going. Kidney function, normal stuff, except for, I think it was, yeah, creatinine, because I'm taking creatine. Um, that's pretty, pretty standard. All right, so there you go, guys. Hopefully that was interesting for you guys to see and to give you an insight into diet in general, and also looking at, into my body. And um, as always, if you have any other questions, um, drop them in the comment section below. Um, I am going to continue this maintenance block for, I don't know, um, at least a couple more weeks, probably a month or so. I'm not in a rush to diet again, like I've already said. Um, I want to get full up blood tests to be able to see what happens with my, um, with my, my white cells. And I will do a follow up video seeing how maintenance goes. Because I've been on maintenance calories now for um, whatever it's been, it's the 4th of, I stopped Christmas day, so it's 5, 6 days, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10-ish days. Um, see no significant weight increases, no significant body composition changes, despite increasing my, um, my calorie intake by double. So I'm going to continue on for, on for a couple more weeks to make sure it's a consistent thing. Then I'll do a follow-up video, because I can explain to you guys what's going on there and why it's completely normal to see something like that. Um, but yeah, have a fantastic day and I'll see you all next time.